here on earth and in thy infinite wisdom and everlasting mercy. Guide us, we beseech thee, on the paths of righteousness and teach us above all to keep the simple things close to our hearts. Our, our sermon for today is on the iniquities of the world. Our text is from Jeremiah 1, starting at verse 6. Then said I, Oh, Lord God, behold, I cannot speak, for I am a child. The Lord said unto me, Save not, I am a child, for thou shalt go to all that I shall send thee. And whatever I command thee, thou shalt speak. to deliver thee. Thank you. Thank you, Jenny. Then the Lord put forth his hand and touched my mouth. And the Lord said unto me, Behold, I have put words into my mouth. Oh, the Elzebub! Forth among all the inhabitants of the land. Men, has traveled far to... Jenny. Yes, great-grandpappy. Help it. Daisy Tours. Read me the 23rd Psalm. The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. He maketh me to lie down in green pastures. He leadeth me beside the still waters. He restoreth my soul. He leadeth me in the paths of righteousness for his name's sake. Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil, for thou art with me. It's a picture of Beelzebub. 
Wanna be my dog? <coughs> All right, but we've got a long way to go. Come on. I wish I was a mole in the ground. I wish I was a mole in the ground. If I was a mole. The Sleeping Beauty? No, I'm Jenny. You aren't running away from home, are you? I'm on my way to Sodom and Gomorrah. Your what? My great-grandpappy always said that, unfortunately, you had to go to Sodom and Gomorrah for the Staff of Life. Where are you from, Jenny? Bullfrog Springs. Well, you must be Reverend Hollingsworth's great-granddaughter, aren't you? Mm-hmm. Does he know you're out here? He's dead. My grandpappy always said that if he died, I should go to town and see the sheriff. I see. Get your things, Jenny. I'll give you a lift into Pan Bucket. See, the sheriff happens to be a good friend of mine. Thank you. What's your name? Well, my name's Steve Webster. I'm a doctor, and I'm pleased to meet you, Jenny. Why? I don't know. It's just figure of speech, I guess, huh? <laughs> Is it your dog? Yes. We'd better take him with us, hadn't we? What's his name? His name? It's, uh... Uh, of course, it's the same as mine. Jenny? No, Hollingsworth. Uh-huh. Well, come on, Hollingsworth. Get in and join the party. You call it, Jenny. Hollingsworth, please. Come on, Hollingsworth. Come on. That's good. Now we'll close this door, Jenny. Ah, thank you. Jen. Oh, gone it, Abner. That's a third time. Don't you call, Sheriff. 10, 20, 35. Hello, Bill. Oh, hiya, Steve. Abner? Hiya, Doc. Got a customer for you. Hmm? Who's busted the law now? This is Jenny Hollingsworth, Jenny. This is Sheriff Bolton. Howdy. Say, I know you. You're Reverend Hollingsworth's great-grandchild, aren't you? From Bullfrog Springs. Yes. Yeah, I was wondering about you. I was thinking of sending a welfare worker up there to see how you was. Uh oh we're forgetting our manners. Jenny, this is uh, Abner Green. He's Sheriff Bolton's star boarder. You do. I do pretty well, but my feet are tired. I walked a long ways, and I got thirsty, and I'm pretty hungry. Wait a second, wait a second. Yes? When somebody says, how do you do, you ain't supposed to give a logical answer. I'm not? No. You say, uh, fine, thank you, and let it go at that. But I don't feel fine. Well, you say so just the same. Folks don't give a darn how you really feel. That's civilization. I don't think I like civilization. What are you going to do about Jenny? I don't know. I've been dreading this was going to happen for a long while. I'll run up to Bullfrog Springs and have a look-see first thing in the morning. Maybe the old man ain't really dead. But if he is dead... I have to take her over to County Juvenile Home in Lodestar. Didn't you, uh... Promise the old fellow that you'd take care of her if anything happened to him? Not me. Well, what'd they ask her to come see you for, then? You got me, Steve. Darn if I know. Well, she's here. What are you going to do about her tonight? Can't you get Susan to sleep her? Now, look, Bill, you know they go to bed at 9 o'clock over there. Her Aunt Matilda would skin me alive if I woke him up now. I can't keep her here, Steve. This ain't no fit place for a kid. How about taking her home with you? Yeah, I thought you'd get around to that. Come on, Jenny. You're going to spend the night with me. Uh-oh. Murphy's just going to love that. Bye. Bye, Jenny. <laughs> Holy cats. Why do you say that? Who are you and what are you doing here? Cats aren't holy. What? Look in the Bible. Cats aren't even mentioned. Well, who said they were? Where'd Steve pick you up? In the wilderness. Oh, driftwood, huh? What's driftwood? Driftwood's something that lays around for Steve to pick up to bring home to sleep on my sofa. Is that your dog? 
Yes. Well, what do you think this is? It's wonderful. It's all wonderful. And beautiful like Solomon's temple. This joint? You must be rich as Solomon. What are you talking about? Ask and it shall be given unto you. Matthew 7, verse 7. And get that dog out of here. Lie down and be good. Hold oh, still, you vomit, or I'll wring your head off. Howdy, Patrick. You sleep well last night? Don't try to put anything over on me, you little rat. I know what you're up to. Morning, Henrietta. Well, how are you doing this morning? Oh, look, a little chicken. You let it alone. It's like Noah's Ark. Now, look, you leave those things alone and stay off of this porch. This is no place for a kid. Steal it, you know, we're bringing riffraff and everything else. I thought I told you to get this mud out of here. I'm sorry. You better wash your face for breakfast, too. Where's the spring? The spring? Good morning, Murph. Good morning, Jenny. Good morning. I see you two have met. Yeah, we've met. Did you sleep all right, Jenny? Oh, yes. Hollingsworth and I slept fine. Hollingsworth? Who? The dog. Oh. Everything under control, Murph? Yeah. She wants to know where the spring is. Well, why didn't you tell her? Oh, then you have got a spring. Why, of course we've got a spring. Hot and cold running water, and you can turn it off and on. Oh, who ever heard of turning a spring off and on? <laughs> show her, Murph. Oh, no. You show her. Murph, do you know what day this is? Saturday. So what? Saturday is the day we give little girls a bath around here. Oh, no. Come on, Hollingsworth, I'll clean you up while your friend Murph washes Jenny behind the ears. Now, just a minute. You're not making a nurse made out of me. You brought her in, so you give her a bath. Gee, that bubble stuff's pretty good, ain't it? Glad I brought that sample home from the drugstore. It's like warm snow. <laughs> What's a drugstore? A drugstore is a store that's owned and operated by a pharmacist, which is me. Now, hold still. Do you love me, Murph? No. Abner Green said you would. When did he say that? Last night at the jail. When Doc Steve was going to take me home, Abner Green said, uh-oh, Murph will just love that. Oh. <laughs> Hello. Oh, hi, Sheriff. Did you check on uh, Reverend Hollingsworth? He's dead, all right. We found him in his church. Too bad. What about Jenny? Well, it looks now like I can't take her over to Lodestar till Monday. Yeah? How'd she get along in your place last night, Steve? She slept. Oh, good. I knew she'd like it in your place. Say, Steve, you don't suppose you could... Uh... Oh, I can't do it, Bill. I, I got a lot, of, a lot of dangerous medical experiments I've been working with around here. They're cages full of ticks with Rocky Mountain fever. Now, well, I'll take her over to Susan's after breakfast and... You gotta clean your ears. No. Now, look, let me tell you something. Men admire women with clean ears. No. I used to scrub Doc Steve's ears when he was scraping your age. That was after his daddy died and he come to live with me. Tell me the story. There ain't none. He just grew up and I sent him to college and became a doctor. And a darn good one, too. Too darn good for this town. You can wash my ears. Mm. You sure need it. Got half a bullfrog springs in him. Supposing Susan saw him like this. Who's Susan? Susan's a school teacher. Wants to marry Steve. She almost hog ties him every now and then. And she goes and makes a mistake and he goes rearing off. Why does he do that? Because most women don't know how to handle men. A smart woman's got to make a man feel that, that life's a picnic. Is that why you have no spouse? You bet it is. But I've had my offers. Who? Well, for instance, you take uh, Susan's aunt. Her name's Matilda. 
she'd like to get my foot in the old bear trap. But not me. No, sir. Not old Murph. Doesn't she have a helpmate? Uh-uh. Man asked her once and then went away. Until the wait of 30 years and he ain't back yet. Picnic. Maybe I could make the bed. Say, now you're talking like an intelligent female. And plant carrots and lettuce and feed the chicken. Oh, no, you're not going to be here that long. Where am I going? Murph, the water's going out. Sure, I just pulled the plug. But the pearls, all the beautiful pearls of the Orient, they're going. Oh, that's life. Everything seems pretty as one of them bubbles, and somebody comes along and pulls the plug, and everything goes down the drain. Lord Jesus, be our holy guest, our morning joy, our evening rest, and with our daily bread in part, thy love and peace to every heart. Amen. Oh, daisies on your coffee pot. They're my favorite flower. Oh, yes, we're very elegant. I'll plant some daisies when I plant the other thing. I told you, you're not going to be here that long. Where am I going? Well, Jenny, in a few days, the, the sheriff will take you over to the county juvenile home in Lodestar. What's a county juvenile home? Well, that's a place where, uh, you'll see, eat your breakfast now. You taking your ticks to San Francisco with you, Steve? Ah, sure I am. I want to continue my own experiments up at the Field Institute. Sure wish I was young enough to pull up stakes and go along with you. All right, you everything happens, Murph. Who's taking care of her today? Well, I thought I'd take her over to Susan's after breakfast and see if they'll take care of her till Monday. Good morning, Susan. Good morning, Mayor Snyder. You're very unfair to your flowers. Unfair? How? Unfair competition. They fade by comparison. Oh, no wonder the women voted for you. <laughs> Did you? Uh, I forgot to register. But Aunt Matilda thinks you are the salt of the earth. Oh, and you. A school teacher is not permitted to voice her opinion of members of the administration. Is there any rule against giving an admiring member of the administration a flower for his buttonhole? Well, <laughs> if there is one, it's overruled as of this moment. Oh, well, thank you. Hello, Susan. Oh, hello, Steve. Can I speak to you for a moment? Uh -huh. Susan, I must be running along. I'll see you later. Dinner, perhaps. Oh, uh, I'm afraid I'll be busy, but thank you just the same. Well, thank you for the flower. <laughs> What's the windbag hanging around for? The windbag wants me to marry him. Sure, sure. He'd love for you to mother that little poison ivy son of his. Who's my rival? Well, this is Jenny Hollingsworth. Jenny, this is Susan Moore. How do you do? How do you do? I asked you first. Oh, what beautiful flowers, like the gardens of Babylon. We never had flowers like these in Bullfrog Spring. Daisies! Where did you find her? Well, I picked a sprout and her dog up in the desert last night. Well, what were they doing there? Well, she's an orphan. Old Reverend Hollingsworth's great-granddaughter from Bullfrog Springs. The old man died up there. Oh. And Susan, I'm sort of uh, responsible for it all Monday. I was wondering whether maybe, uh, could she stay with you to Lynn? Of course she can, Steve. What a girl. Here, Susan. Have one of your own flowers. <laughs> from the Field Institute come? No, not yet. Oh, I hope it never comes. Oh, now, Susan, you know you don't mean that. I hope they turn you down. I don't think they will. Steve, are you really set on going? Oh, I can't get anywhere in this place. Snyder runs the town, you know that. Pan Bucket needs a hospital so badly it's criminal, and what happens? But, Steve... They vote a public park. Why? It looks good to the people. Snyder can use it when he goes campaigning again. That's not for me. I'm getting out. Well, what about me? Did I just imagine you said something about love? I said it all right, and I meant it. Then take me with you. Susan, you know how they've been paying me in this town with vegetables, mostly cabbage, and I don't mean Uncle Sam's. But I like cabbage, and I know 22 different ways of preparing it. Honey, a steady diet of coleslaw is medically unsound. Oh, Steve, please. <sighs> Darling, we've been through all this a dozen times. Two dozen? I'm sorry, Susan. That's just how it is. We'll have to wait. Well, isn't six years about long enough for a girl to wait? 
Has it been six years? Oh, darling, I've got little nuggets saved up. On your salary? It isn't much, but it could help carry us for a while. Oh, fine, great. That's for me. I've always wanted to be supported by a nice girl. Oh, don't give me any of that old-fashioned malarkey, Steve Webster. I'm in love with you, and I want to make a life with you. I don't care who pays for it or how it happens. I want you now. Oh, darling, don't put me in cold storage. Don't make me the town's old maid, the ones they make jokes about. Like Aunt Matilda. A package from Railway Express for Susan Moore. I'll take it. Are you Susan Moore? You're new here, aren't you? Yeah, my family just moved over from Rainbow. Well, I'm Susan's Aunt Matilda Moore. Well, sign here, Mrs. Moore. It isn't Mrs. Moore, it's Miss Moore. <laughs> I'm sorry. <laughs> You're sorry. Here. Susan? Susan? Coming. All right, Steve, whatever you say. I know it'll work out somehow. It's got to. Right, certainly, everything will be all right. No, it won't. What? She makes mistakes. What? Murph says so. Just what does Murph say? That you hogtie Doc Steve every once in a while, and then you make a mistake, and off he goes raring. Jenny, don't listen to her. She's just making it up. My good friend, Murph. And from whom does Murph get his information? Well, so help me, I'm innocent. Oh. I never said... Susan. The material for your dress just arrived. Well, what's the matter with you? You look like you've been dragged through a knot hole. Nothing, just a little misunderstanding. Hmm. A little misunderstanding. If Steve Webster's at the bottom, I'd call it a big misunderstanding. Really, Susan, it's your own fault with people like Mayor Snyder crazy about you have to lallygag around with this Steve Webster. He'll never amount to a hill of beans. <laughs> Cabbage of me. Cabbage. And who is this picking my flowers? Oh, this is Jenny Hollingsworth. Jenny, this is uh, Susan's Aunt Matilda. How do you do? Steve, I said it behind your back, and I'll say it to your face. You're an unsteady, impractical dreamer, not worth your salt. Why do you say, how do you do? And if Susan had any sense, she'd find a steady man. What did you say? I said, why do you say, how do you do? Well, I never. You don't care how I do. You didn't even expect me to answer you. What is the matter with this child? You don't even like me. She doesn't either. Oh, Jenny, I... That's impertinence. I ought to box your ears. Jenny, will you shut up? Don't you know that children should be seen and not heard? Not according to Jeremiah. Say not, I am a child, for thou shalt go to all that I shall send thee, and whatsoever I command thee, thou shalt speak. Stephen, will you take her away from here? I'm sorry, Matilda. Now, wait a minute, Matilda. Wait a minute. Everything with Steve is waiting. You wait for him to keep appointments. You wait for him to stop dreaming. You wait for him to marry you. Really, Susan, it's your own fault. No self-respecting woman would wait for any man, particularly Steve Webster. How can you say that? Jenny. Murph says she's been waiting for a man for 30 years. Oh, Susan, I will not stay here and listen to this. I'll see you at dinner. <laughs> <laughs> What'd you do, come down from Bullfrog Springs on a broom? Doc Steve. Go away, go away. But everything was so nice till we met her. No, everything was strictly shaky even before. Why on earth do you say those things? My grandpappy always told me, truth shall be thy shield. Look, Sprout, that may be true, but you can't go around hitting people over the head with a shield. It hurts. Did I hurt her? Hurt her? You massacred her. I'm sorry, Doc Steve. See, truth isn't always the kind thing. But if Susan makes mistakes, somebody ought to tell her. She does not make mistakes. Jenny, listen. Repeat after me. Susan does not make mistakes. Susan does not make mistakes. That's right. You can quote me. She's a very fine and lovely person. You should be just half as nice when you grow up. Come on, we'll break the news to Murph. That's it. What is it? A double chocolate soda for my girlfriend. Jenny still sleeps on the sofa. Why? What happened? You talk too much. Oh, it's a free country. Mm -hmm. And she courted you freely to Susan and Matilda. Doggone females can't keep anything to themselves. And the sooner we get rid of that little wildflower, the better. Now be a good dog, Holly. Hollingsworth, 
Who ever heard of a dog named Hollingsworth? Mine is. Mine you. Get a load of the rag she's wearing. Strictly sticky. Whose cat dragged that in? Maybe there's another wind in the dust bowl. Watch this. Let's turn off. Take it easy. I Might have broken her arm. Fight. Listen, Gruesome, that's enough bag talk out of you. Now you get out and stay out. You can't throw me out. My father's the mayor. I didn't vote for him. That dog ain't supposed to be in here. You sell food here. I'll report you to the health department. I'm the health department. Now you made your report, now scram. Get that hound out of here before they can throw me in the calaboose with Dabna Green. I'm sorry, Nurse. Kids, bad enough as they are, but worse yet, look at the people they grow up to be. Movie's open! <laughs> Okay, double chocolate soda. Ah, that looks good, doesn't it, Jenny? Here, come on now, eat your soda. She's not used to kids, I guess. You know, they can be mighty cruel sometimes. They said it was rags. It isn't. It's made from great grandpappy's best Sunday shirt. Come on, Jenny. Judge. Oh, it's you. Well, you two want to get married? Uh, no, not yet, but I'd like for you to meet my friend. Hmm. This is Jenny Hollingsworth. Jenny, this is Judge Beckett. How do you do? Fine, thanks. I want to get her a new outfit, Judge. What kind of an outfit? Well, you know, like the other kids have, only the best, the very best you've got. Oh, Steve, you ought to get a decent outfit for yourself instead of always buying for somebody else's kids. Well, my outfit's quite all right, but my friend here is on her first visit to the big city, and she needs a couple of things badly. Including a, uh, B-A-T-H. I just had one. Murph gave it to her. What? You know, I think this'll fit all right. Like that? Very pretty. I look beautiful. <sighs> Dress, one pinafore, two pair of socks, two hair ribbons, one petticoat, one pair of shoes, and one nightgown. You forgot the D R A W E R S. So I did. So I did. One drawers. Uh, that comes to thirteen dollars and eighty-six cents, including tax. Charge it. Oh, now, Doc, you've owed me four and a half bucks for the last three months. Really? Well, I'll settle the whole bill on the 15th, Judge. This is the 15th. Tilly, take her clothes off that chair. Well, the Sprout's got to have a decent outfit. Not at my expense. Now, wait a minute, Judge. Look, look. You know, Susan Moore was telling me about your three boys, all of them at the bottom of their class. They don't take after me. No, 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 no. It's not their fault. They're out sick too much, colds and sore throats. They ought to have their tonsils removed. I can't afford three $10 operations. Well, I'll tell you what I'll do. I'll trade you, Judge. Three tonsillectomies for one outfit, and the other balance I'll still owe you, huh? Well, all right. Thanks, Judge. But you've got to look respectable in your calls, Doc, so uh, take along this shirt you ordered and never get paid for. All right. Not that it's charity. No, sir. For the shirt, you take out the adenoids. All right. Send it over with the kids' stuff. Come on, Jack. <laughs> Well, there are two kinds of soda eaters. There's the bottom uppers. They use the straws and work from the bottom up. And then there's the top downers. They use the spoon and work from the top down. Now you can take your choice. I think I'll be a top downer. It's remarkable what fine clothes do to the personality of a woman. Sodas are pretty good, aren't they, Jenny? There are moments in life when words are superfluous. 
What's the idea of throwing my son out of here? They have reservations for wild Indians. You're carrying a personal feud too far. Meaning what? You were pretty uppity at the town meeting last night. Uh-huh. Walked out, as I recall. Sore because my park and bandstand won and your hospital lost. Sure, sure. We don't need a hospital for saving lives. What we need is another cozy place for you to make speeches. You're a bad loser, Doc Webster. Why should the taxpayers build you a hospital to practice in? Taxpayers built you a courthouse to practice in. There's a perfectly good hospital in Lodestar. 50 miles away. Maybe you can afford to reach it if anything happens to you, but most of the people in this town are stuck here with nothing but kitchen table surgery and the constant threat of spotted fever. You're always harping on spotted fever. You don't fool me, Webster, and I know the reason for your belligerence. You're a radical, and if there's any more trouble with you, I'll have you run out of town. I'd like to have you try. What? Now, now, boys, no violence, no violence. You won't have to run Steve out of town. He's leaving. Good riddance. It's just as well. And you stop selling sweets to my son. He has a delicate stomach. Come on, Council. Publicans and Pharisees, that's what they are. <laughs> <laughs> that kid's passable smart. <laughs> Have to get out of this town, Murph, before they have me up oh, for murder. Oh, no, they're not all like Snyder. They... No, they all do what he tells them to. They won't even let me vaccinate their kids. Well, they got to learn the hard way. Say, you know, I got stacks of that vaccine on my shelves. They won't even take it for free. Might as well send it back. Oh, you better hang on to it, Murph. I'll probably be a long way off when it happens, but they may need that serum someday. Listen, after you're out of here, I don't care if the whole kit and caboodle of them die of spotted fever. Fine talk for a little kid to listen to. Why don't you let her go to the movie? Well, I was going to leave her here. Oh, no. Well, Murph, i got to make some calls. Here, Jenny. Here's a dime. Go around the corner of the theater and give it to the lady in the window. Well, how's she going to get home? Oh, I'll be here when the show's out. Jenny, come in and see me after it's over. Well, somebody ought to take her at the theater. OK, Jenny. Murph will take no, you around. Murph will what? Never mind. I'll do it. Come on, Jenny. Come on, Hollingsworth. Poor little kid. She ain't got a chance. Chance of what? Chance of living the way a kid oughta. Tender care. Kissing away the hurts. Understanding. Which is something you'll never understand. Ah. Uh, females. Blah, blah, blah. Oh. oh. Hello, Tilda. Good morning, Esther. Can I help you? You can help me get that conceited non-entity you call a boss out from behind that prescription counter where he's hiding. Customer to see you, Murph. Be right out, Essie. Well, well, Matilda, hello. This is a surprise. Something? It's a lucky thing for you that I was born and reared a lady. Or I'd bounce these bottles off that empty skull of yours. Oh, Matilda, you seem upset. Who wouldn't be upset with a blithering old gossip monger filling a child's head full of lies and innuendos and sending her around to insult people? Now, now, you're taking this all too personal. I was merely philosophizing out loud to Steve, and Jenny must have been listening. What do you mean by saying that I've been waiting 30 years for a man? I've a good mind to sue you. Trust a child to get things backwards. What I said to Steve was... There's a man been waiting 30 years for you. <laughs> what man? Well, now, Matilda, you know there's been more than one. <laughs> there have been a few, I'll admit. <laughs> you bet there is. If there never was a man born, I'd give the time of day. Mm. You said will for us men if all women thought that way, especially attractive women. You wouldn't be trying to soft-soap me, would you, Murph? Uh, speaking of soap, Matilda, I've got something here I'd just like to have you try. Now, this is a, this is a brand new preparation designed especially for ladies of beauty, refinement, and discrimination. Oh. A formula of non-irritating ingredients guaranteed to preserve the youthful glow in the most delicate of skins. <laughs> With my compliments, Matilda. Thanks. You're welcome. But don't you get the idea you're pulling the wool over my eyes? I can just hear that nasty little subconscious voice of yours saying, I ought to give the old bag a bar of naphtha for that horse face of hers. I never thought of naphtha. It's all right. Thanks. Thanks just the same, Murph. When a girl gets to be my age, she appreciates a compliment. Even if it is from hunger. I wish I was a mole in the ground. I wish I was a mole in the ground. If I was a mole in the ground, I'd know my way around. I'm gonna 
kill you. Go away. I'm a monster. You certainly are. Who's a monster? You are. Now leave me alone. You're an orphan. I am not. You are too, and you're going to have to go and live in an orphanage. I don't care. You'll care all right. An orphanage is a horrible place. Just dirty little kids like you who don't have any father and mother live there. That won't hurt me. Nothing can hurt me. I bet my top could land on your old toe and hurt like anything. Go away! You're wicked! You're wicked and pain! You're wicked and pain! No, no, Hollingsworth! You mustn't! Hollingsworth, come back! I'll tell my father! I'll tell my father I have to... Don't kill! He bit me! Doc Steve, I was coming home, and that boy threw his top at me, and Hollingsworth pulled his pants down. Doc Steve. Not now, Jenny. But I want to tell you about. Didn't you hear what Matilda said? Children should be seen and not heard. Why? I don't know. Maybe so grown-ups can do all the talking. Excuse me, Jenny. What do you want to tell me? Now start all over again. He said I was an orphan and that I was going to have to go live in an orphanage. That isn't so, is it, Doc Steve? Well, I'm afraid it is, but you won't mind that. An orphanage is a nice place. No, it isn't. It's a horrible place. Well, you probably won't have to stay there very long anyhow, because somebody will come along and adopt you, take you home with them to live. Then why couldn't you adopt me? Adopt me now, Doc Steve. See, I'm going away from here too, Jenny, just as soon as I get a letter that I've been expecting. But if the letter doesn't come, maybe I could stay. Now you sound just like Susan. But couldn't I? I wouldn't count on it, Jenny, because I'm pretty sure to go. Then I'd rather go back to Bullfrog Springs and just, just live with the bullfrogs. No waterworks now. Jenny, don't touch those. Why not? Because they're very dangerous. Why? Here. Let me show you something. Take a look through this. Now, oh, just this one. Close one eye. I don't see anything. Now, look very closely. Do you see those little red objects? Tell me that you waste your time, Doc Steve, looking at those little things. Those little things are very dangerous. <clears throat> See, they live inside ticks. And when a tick bites a person, those red spots get in their blood and give them a horrible disease. Like a plague? Mm-hmm. Like the plague of locusts that came and devoured Egypt? Only more terrible. See, these little bugs devour people. Do they eat them alive? Uh, no, not exactly. You know what a fever is, don't you, Jenny? Great-grandpappy said I had a fever once. I was all hot and I up-swallowed. Oh, well, this would be just like that, only worse. Then if you're the doctor, you have to go about the land and heal with the laying on of your hands. Well, no, it's not that simple. See, our laying on of hands is different. Today, we call it therapeutics. Thera thera uh, putics. Putics? Uh huh. Or prophylaxis. Pro Pro Laxus. That's right. And we use chemicals and serums and vaccines. See, that's the miracle that keeps people from having disease. It reminds me I'd better vaccinate you right away. <sighs> Come on, Jim. All right, Jenny. Now, first thing we'll do is to make your arm very clean. A little cotton through here. And some alcohol. Put it right up here. Cool. Now, you mustn't touch it after I swab. See, that makes the skin unclean again. Now, don't touch this one. I'll get things ready for your inoculation. What's inoculation? Inoculation? Now, that's the kind of medicine that keeps people from getting sick. There's a bell outside, you know. What do you want? I've come to kill that dog. 
What are you talking about? That beast is vicious. He attacked my son on the way home from the matinee. Lester is home in bed now with hysterics, and for all I know, he has hydrophobia. Well, I'll get my passenger shots and get right over there. I'll not allow you to lay hands on my son. Well, if your son's been bitten, he's got to be looked after right away. No, no, he didn't bite your son. He didn't. Jenny, are you telling the truth? Yes, he didn't bite him. The dog protected me like the horse protected Roy Rogers in the movie. She's lying. No, I believe she's telling the truth. She happens to be the worst truth teller I've ever known. Get away from there. I'm going to shoot that no, dog. No, you don't, don't. Just a minute. Here, you can't do this to me. Get out. I'll settle with you in a law court. Yes, be sure to bring this. Snyder, get out of those clothes and have them fume again. Jenny, get out of here. Keep that dog out of here. Use the back door till I get things cleaned up. Find that snake. I'm up to some work out of them. I want you to take this sign around to the front door and tack it up. I told you to use the use the kitchen door. Now stay out of that. Okay, Doc Steve. Hey. Hello there. Well, at least you didn't say how do you do. Who are you? I'm Driftwood. Is that so? Are you the danger? No! Tick! Oh, them things. Give this to the doc, will you? I think it's the one he's been expecting. Field Institute. Can you read? Certainly. Can you? I wish I was a mole in the ground. I wish I was a mole in the ground. If I was a mole in the ground, I'd know my way around. I wish I was a lizard in the spring. I wish I was a lizard in the spring. If I was a lizard in the spring, I'd hear... Did your letter come to the Field Institute? No, not yet. I hope it never comes. You see, I'm going away from here, too. Just as soon as I get a letter. Steve. What's the danger sign for? Oh, Snyder was here and upset a table of infected ticks. Yeah, he's plenty burned up, Steve. I gotta take the dog. But he didn't bite Lester. He didn't. You're gonna kill him. You're gonna make him dead. Not on your life, honey. I'm just gonna put him in jail until it's time for the trial. That's my job, Jenny. That's what a sheriff does. Oh, it's a pretty silly kind of a trial, a dog defending his life. You know, I agree with you, Steve, but I've got my orders. <laughs> Run, Holly, run! Run! Jenny, I told you to stay off this porch. But I've got to catch the hound, Steve. Well, come on, I'll help you. He won't go far. I thought maybe yeah, you'd I know what your... you thought, and if everything ran true to form, you'd talk me into staying home and playing nursemaid for Jenny. Well, tonight she's all yours. I got her a supper, you put her to bed. I'm going to jail. Huh? Yeah, I got a gin rummy game on with Abner Green. I'm if I got a date. So uh, am I. 
Well, you know, you're the best gin rummy player in the county. You wouldn't take all of poor Abner's money, would you? He took it away from the sheriff, didn't he? And besides, if Abner gets enough money to pay his back alimony, they'll turn him loose. Was that bad? I'll say it is. While he's in jail, Abner's a happy man. Soon as he gets out, some woman takes him to clean us. Now you know Abner's a weak vessel, and it's my beholden duty to keep him away from women. Far be it for me to have it said that Murphy shirked his duty. Good night. Now, look, Murph, I... What's the trouble, Jenny? He didn't write Lester. He can't talk. How's he gonna tell them? Well, we're going to tell them. They won't believe it. Nobody likes the truth in Zadam and Gamora. Jenny, we're gonna make them like it. Now, just don't be afraid. He'll die. Hollingsworth will die. He'll stop living just like great grandpappy stopped living. He died and he didn't move anymore. <coughs> he just sat there in the church and he died and he never spoke another word. <laughs> and Jenny. I ran out of there. <laughs> You'll die. You'll die. Baby, 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 Jenny. <laughs> Did you forget you're having dinner here tonight? Well, I thought maybe you were mad at me. I thought maybe the dinner was off. <laughs> Darling, I'm not half as mad at you as Aunt Matilda's going to be if you don't get over here right now. Will you hurry? Yes, I'll be right over. Oh, oh and darling, don't start any arguments with Aunt Matilda. No, I'll be very careful. A and don't forget to wear a tie. No, I won't. Goodbye, honey. <laughs> now, <laughs> Hollingsworth's a good dog. And he's innocent, Jenny. We know that. And we'll make the others know it. Now, tomorrow, we'll go to church, and we'll hold our heads up, and we'll show them all we're not afraid for Hollingsworth, huh? And then Monday, you'll have them back. All right, Doc Steve. Now, I gotta rush over to Susan's, because I'm, I'm late already, and Matilda will scalp me. You're not afraid to stay alone, are you? Because I'll be home early. You'll be a good girl now, and you won't sit up too late, huh? I'll see you later. I'm sure you're all right. Never mind. Come on. Here. Put this on. Tomorrow I'll see if I can't trade an appendectomy for an overcoat. Uh-oh. Here we I hope you don't expect any dinner at this hour. Hello, Motel. I'm sorry that we're late. Late? The steak is as tough as shoe leather by now and looks the part. You are the most irresponsible. Motel, I'm awfully sorry. I got held up. There was something important happened, and I yes. couldn't possibly... Alexander Bell invented the telephone in 1865. 1876, Matilda. 1876, Matilda. It's a very handsome tie you have there, Steve. Oh, thank you. Hello, Jenny, dear. Hello. Well... I see that they're wearing sleeves a little longer this season. Doc Steve is going to trade a peck of me for an overcoat tomorrow. Hmm? Appendectomy. I don't recall that this young hoodlum received any invitation for dinner. Not that there's any dinner worth having by now. Oh, it's perfectly all right, Aunt Matilda. It's fine. In fact, I'm warming it up right now. Oh, I had my dinner with Murph. What's a hoodlum? A hoodlum is a fresh little girl who talks with impertinence about her elders. You mean what I said about you, Wendy? Shh, Jenny. Oh, I didn't mean to hit her on the head with the truth. I think you better come inside with me and help with dinner, Jenny. Matilda. Yes. Let's kiss and make up, huh? Oh. Sue says you're leaving town. That's right. San Francisco. Can't say as I blame you. Wasting your time with that riffraff and shanty town on the river bottom. Funny thing about bugs, Matilla, they're not very social conscious. One of them just soon bite you as a Perkins. Comparison is odious, to say the least. I won't be in your hair much longer. I'm gonna miss you, Steve. You take a cussing out better than anybody I ever knew. I never really minded it coming from you, Matilda. Makes me feel like one of the family. Are you thinking of taking Susan with you? You wouldn't like that, would you? I would not. Well, don't worry, I can't afford to take it. But I'll be back. Oh, no, you won't. <laughs> they never come back to this town. I know. <laughs> I'm a typical old maid. Everyone in town knows I got stood up 30 years ago. 
He never came back. You think I'm like him, don't you? You think I'm wrong for Susan. Well, I agree, I'm a poor catch. I'm a doctor. I like research. I believe in miracles in medicine, and I want to see them come true. <laughs> Matilda, I'll probably always be poor, and Susan doesn't deserve that. But I love her, and I'm pretty sure she loves me. What do you say about that? Love? <laughs> That's what makes all the trouble. I ought to know. His name was Wilbur Brown, wasn't it? Yeah. Whatever happened to him? <laughs> he just quit. <laughs> he was a nice fellow, Wilbur Brown. Even though he was a little fat and puffy and too short for me, but what man isn't? <laughs> Anyway, he proposed to me. You know how a fellow looks into your eyes and calls you darling, and then he takes you in his arms. Is that how he did it? No. No, he turned to me sudden like, and he said, Matilda Moore, will you marry me? And you said no? No, I said yes, and I guess I scared him. Hello. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Too bad you were in well, love yes, with him, Matilda. Is. Oh, well, you probably could have married moment, most any fellow around here if you'd wanted to. Yes, Benjamin Franklin, Thomas Jefferson, Captain John Smith. <laughs> Steve, you want it on the phone. Who is it? Uh, Perkins. He said he called the house in the drugstore. Essie told him to try here. Oh. I'm sorry if I hurt your feelings. Uh, <laughs> that's all right. Forget it. Sometimes we old ladies let loose with too much temperament. What's temperament? Temperament is temper that's too old to spank. <laughs> Aunt Matilda, was Susan a chatterbox when she was little? She certainly was. She was a regular old magpie. Yeah, so I'll get out there as soon as possible. Young Clem Perkins. Sorry, I've got to rush. Wait. Who is going to eat this steak? That's what I want to know. Thanks for letting me come, Steve. Uh-huh. Seems as if I never get a chance to be alone with you anymore. You're not alone with him. Steve, you're... you're hopeless. You're incorrigible. You're, you're untidy. You forgot your tie. You're stubborn as a mule. And, and I love you. Good. I even know a new recipe for cabbage. Fine. What's the matter, Jimmy? I'm not very comfortable here. Oh, just sit still, dear. What's wrong, Jenny? The wind blows right in my face. And I'm cold. Oh, you couldn't be cold tonight. It's all right. I'll get used to it. All right, Jenny. Climb in the middle. I'm sure it'll be much cozier next to Steve. It's much warmer. She's had a tough day getting used to civilization. I'm beginning to think some people are better off in the wilderness. I'll call you if I need you. All right. Howdy, Doc. Perkins, hello, Lane. Hello, Doc. Time is mighty sick, Doc. You've got to help him. Well, I'll do my best. Too bad you wouldn't let me vaccinate him. Then this could not happen. We'll do anything you say, Doc. What? You need some advice. You know, I was just thinking the same thing about you. You aren't handling things right. I think I ought to have a talk with you. Oh, great. You don't understand men very well. Well, you're right there. You don't know what men like. But Murph does, hmm? Not altogether. My great-grandpappy always told me to keep my eyes open. Did he ever tell you to keep your mouth shut? Speak ye every man the truth to his neighbor. Do you know what men like best? No. Clean ears and picnics. Hmm? I'm afraid I don't understand. The trouble can't be with ears. It must be the picnics. What are you talking about? Men don't like responsibility. They just want to have fun and feel like life is a picnic. Oh, I think I see what you mean. You do? Yes, you mean an intelligent woman makes everything easy and fun, so a man just naturally falls in the spirit of things and enjoys it. So the right woman makes it possible for everything to be a 
A picnic? Hmm? Yes, and then he'll just want to get his foot in the old bear trap. <laughs> Where did you get that one? Murph knows everything. <laughs> you. What about my boy, Doc? I don't know, Perkins. I really don't. At least we vaccinated the rest of you. You mean you didn't vaccinate Clem? Vaccine prevents, it doesn't cure. Ain't there no cure for him, Doc? Not for sure, no. Well, the Field Institute claims an anti-serum, but we don't know anything about its therapeutic value. Anyway, it'd take too long to get it here. All we can do is let the disease run its course. I do as I told you, Perkins. Keep the place clean of ticks and use plenty of that Darius powder I gave you. Keep the kids away from those sheep. We want to prevent the others from getting infected. Sure will, Doc. Always, son. Send Blaine after me if there's any change. Say, Doc, ain't there no place in town the little clam could kind of be near you? We don't have a hospital. I'm sorry. Thanks, Doc. How is the boy, Steve? Not good. Spotted fever? <sighs> yes. What's this, Jenny? I'm going to ride back here. Why? Because I'm just a child, and I'm trying to keep out of the way and speak only when I'm spoken to. Doc Steve? Yes? What is a picnic? Oh. <laughs> Wasn't that the sheriff's car? Yes, I wonder where he's going in such a hurry. Well, well there's Judge Beckett and Mayor Schneider. Maybe they'll know. Good evening, Judge. What's the sheriff going in such a rush? An airplane crashed last night near Fort Frog Springs. Last night? The sheriff's going to be a little late, isn't he? They just located it. I wonder if I better get over there. It's more apt to lead an undertaker. They had an air search all day yesterday. It was a chartered plane from San Francisco. You can read all about it in the Weekly Sentinel, Steve. <laughs> Silas, you're not serious about bringing that child's dog into court, are you? I certainly am. I will see that dog destroyed. The dog ought to be killed to see if he has rabies. If you're wrong, then you'll apologize to the dog for taking his life. I am more concerned with the life of my poor motherless son. Uh-huh. Well, we'll see you and your poor motherless son in court. afraid when they ask you to talk. That's right, dear. Just tell the truth and do it in your own best way. The truth? That's right. You know, speak ye every man the truth unto his neighbor. Yeah, and speak up so they can hear you. No mumbling. I'm sorry that Steve Webster has you mixed up in this, Susan. I don't mind. However, I do admire you for sticking by your friends. And I want to assure you that your attitude will not prejudice me one iota against you. That's very white of you, Mayor Schneider. <laughs> Where's Webster? She call out at Perkins Shack. He can't come. Who's going to represent the defendant? I am. You got any objection? What do you know about law? I know this much. They'd stick me in jail with Abner Green if I was to poke you in the nose. Jen. Uh, that's eight for you. Uh, how do we stand, Sheriff? You owe the judge four dollars, and he owes you seven days. The court's assembled, Judge. Well, take the defendant in. I'll be with him as soon as Abner pays up. Okay, four bucks. Hollingsworth! Sorry, you can't talk to him now, Jenny. Witnesses ain't allowed to talk to the defendant. Jenny. Everybody rise. Hi, folks. Hi. Man, yes, Swerf. The Justice Court in and for the Township of Pan Bucket, the Honorable William L. Beckett presiding, is now in session. Be seated. Read the complaint. The plaintiff, one Lester Snyder, a minor, does aver that on May 19th of this year, a certain dog known as Hollingsworth did viciously attack and maim him. Well, then Lester came home crying. 
He was in great pain. I dressed his wounds. Thank you, Mayor. Yeah. Maybe the dog did bite Lester. Of course, if he had, the dog would be dead by now. Lester don't get hydrophobia. He gives it. I object. Order, order. Sustain. Well, if the dog did bite your son, why didn't you call for medical attention from Doc Webster? Let that charlatan touch my boy. Now, just a I minute, you boom, doctor. Isn't it true that on Saturday that this vicious dog growled and tried to bite Lester while the little lad was in the drugstore? But there was a good reason why. Answer the question. Did the dog growl at Lester? Well, yes, he growled. But Lester was behaving like a That will do. Thank you. Well, I'd have growled, too, if I'd been a dog and some brat had thrown a top at me. That will do. Your Honor, the witness will refrain from making canine flights of fancy. Look at here, Will Beckett. Don't you talk like that to me. Remember me? I'm Effie Keenan. For goodness sake, Jessica, this is a court of law. Uh, next witness. Master Snyder, take the stand. There he is, that dog. He bit me. He chased me and tore me apart. He did not. He didn't bite him. He's telling a lie. Your Honor. He's telling a lie. Order, order. Murph, will you please see the witness and the defendant do not interrupt the plaintiff? You see that the plaintiff tells the truth. Proceed. I submit to Your Honor that this vicious dog, breaking the health rules of our city, was endangering the lives of all the children in the store and on the street, and that this poor little tyke may yet pay the full penalty for the assault upon his person. In Pan Bucket, a man has a right to wear a gun just so long as he wears it on the outside so as everybody can see it. It's there for a purpose, for self-defense in case of trouble. Now, a little girl like Jenny, she can't tote a six-gun to hold off a bandit like Lester. Objection. Sustained. Your Honor, if I had all the chewing gum that little locust has lifted off of my front candy counter, Objection. why I wouldn't... Sustained. <laughs> well, anyway, the little girl has a dog. And when Lester tried to bully her, why, the dog resented it. It shows the dog has good taste. Objection. This is all irrelevant and Im immaterial. Does learned counsel admit the dog bit Lester? Nothing of the kind. Jenny Hollingsworth, take the stand, honey. Good morning. Good morning. Your Honor, we object to this witness. Why, counsel? Because her veracity is worthless. She's too young to know anything about the truth or perjury. Swear in. Do you solemnly swear to tell the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth? Yes, sir. Now, Jenny, you have just promised to tell the truth. Yes, sir. What is truth? It's very hard to answer. You see? Pontius Pilate asked that same question a long time ago. And it was hard to answer then, too. <coughs> Court accepts the witness. Proceed, Murph. Now, Jenny, you tell the judge. Did you meet Lester Snyder on the way home from the movie last Saturday? Yes, sir. On which side of the street? Right or left? Coming or going? <laughs> Order in the court. Will you please keep quiet so we can hear this case? Proceed. Now, Jenny, did uh, Hollingsworth bite Lester Snyder on Saturday? No, he just tore off Lester's pants and Lester yelled. Then he yelled because he was bitten. Oh, no. He yelled because he felt so silly standing there in his underdrawers. <laughs> Order in the court. It is the judgment of this court that despite extenuating circumstances, this dog did viciously attack a defenseless child. And we hereby order this dog destroyed. No, no, he didn't. He didn't do it. Oh, my God. Better take her. No, he didn't do it. Oh, my God. He didn't do it. I was there. I saw him. Oh, my God. He didn't do it. What kind of a court is this, picking on babies and dogs? Why, you confounded, misplaced haberdasher, who ever told you that you Order, would... order, please. As I said, it is the judgment of this court this dog be destroyed as a minister of the citizens of Panbucket. And the judgment sticks. Sheriff, carry out the order. Wait a minute, Judge. May I speak in defense of this dog? Oh, now, Doc, Steve, don't make it any tougher for me. The boy's been bitten and the dog should be killed. Yes, Judge, if the boy's been bitten. I object. Shut up. But well, Steve, before the you witnesses. pass sentence on the dog, may uh, I ask the court to insist upon a medical examination of Lester Snyder? 
No, no, nothing doing. We object. Why, Thompson, you brought the action. I will not allow that man to touch my boy. Hey, I'm the health department. I'll examine him. Well, Lester isn't well. He shouldn't be here. You insist on, on your boy's protection, Mayor. This court agrees. Murph, you will examine the boy. And I think I will, too. Papa, Papa! I object. Overruled. Papa. You see any bruises or scratches? Not a thing. Why, you ain't been bit, you young whelp. I got a good mind to snap at you myself. Mayor Snyder? There's not a mark on this boy. The health department official reports that said Lester Snyder is without a scratch and therefore could not have been bit by the said Jenny Hollingsworth's dog. Well, Lester heals quickly. <laughs> order, order. You have made statements under oath, Mayor, which could be called perjury. Instead, I'll hold you in contempt of this court and fine you $100. No. No, now you listen to me. When that dog pulled off Lester's pants, it's only an accident that it wasn't skin he grabbed. Maybe the dog didn't actually bite Lester, but he tried. Now, he may be sick, have the rabies. He's dangerous and he ought to be killed. Dogs aren't killed as if they have rabies. They're kept under observation. Anyway, the dog's leaving town. So is Jenny, and so am I. And we're just as anxious to leave as you are to have us go. Then I insist that the dog be kept under observation until you go. The citizens of Panbucket ought to be protected against unhealthy beasts wandering about its streets with a questionable vagrant. And if I see that dog again in the streets, I'll kill it. If the mayor is so concerned with the health of the citizens, it may interest him to know that Panbucket has spotted fever. I warned you it might happen, and it has. You're always crying panic about spotted fever. Perhaps I am, Snyder. But today, young Clint Perkins is dead from it. <laughs> Lester! Lester! Come here, Lester! <laughs> <laughs> because I lie. My heart is black, not pure. Jenny, what are you not talking pure. about, dear? I plunged in the sin. I said he was mine. He's not mine. He came from the Elzebub. What are you trying to say, Jenny? The picture. I'll show you the picture. I hid it. <laughs> Oh, Steve, I'm so glad you're here. Thank you. Doc Stevens, Hollingsworth's dead? No, no, he's all right, Jenny. He's not going to die. They're just keeping him in custody at the jail. He isn't coming home. Oh, he's having a fine time. Abney Green's probably teaching him chin rummy this very minute. Steve, there's something on her mind. She's been trying oh, to tell me. Oh, Murph, I got to see Doc Steve right away. I heard about the epidemic and little Clem Perkins. Yeah, it could have been one of my children. Take it easy, Mrs. White. Customers for you, Steve. Hello, Mrs. White. Doctor, I'm sorry I was so slow. You always told me. Could you vaccinate us for spotted fever now? Well, of course. Uh, roll up the sleeves. I'm glad you had the sense to come. Holy cats, half the town's outside. I'll dash back to the store and get the rest of that vaccine. Steve, is there something I can do? Well, yes, Susan. Uh, have that crowd line up outside and put some distilled water on the boil. It's out on the back porch. All right, fine. Thank you. Good gracious! Did you forget them all yourself, Mrs. White? There you are, Jane. Now, get all the rest of your friends to come over, will you? Anything for you, Doc. <laughs> all right, girls. Come on. This way. Well, it's the last of the serum. I'll have to wait till Murph gets here. Just be patient, folks. We'll get to each one of you. Keep them in line, Mrs. Hicks, please. Well, you've been wanting to vaccinate the whole town. You sure hitting your wish. Keep your shirt on. Hello. I've got some more needles in my bag. I'll get them. Sorry, Steve. Well, Doc's too busy to come over there. You bring the kids over here. Oh, sorry. Oh. Well, you seem to be quite at home here. Just trying to help. A body could perish and not be found for days with all the thought you give them. Now what happened, Matilda? I waited lunch, you know, until the cream tuna was just ruined. I sat there and worried until I had a splitting headache, but did that make any difference to you now? 
You know, vaccinating the children did seem more important than cream tuna. This is an emergency, Matilda. You could have telephoned. The telephone was invented in... 1876. In 1876. Well, it's plain to see that I can't talk with you. You know, for once you're right, Matilda. This is the first time I've ever been in Steve's kitchen. And I like being in Steve's kitchen. It's fun. It's, it's a picnic. In fact, I, I think I'll scrub the floors. It's not his kitchen. It's Murph's. Everything that Steve Webster owns is on that front porch. If you must scrub something of his, go scrub those guinea pigs. Well, I think I will. Listen to that old man trap. Blah, blah, blah. You know, it's about time that you and Steve and everybody else knew what I think about something. Honestly, Susan, I don't know what's come over you. Any self-respecting unmarried woman who would walk in. We gotta into get Susan out of this. You go in and soften her up. Oh, no, no, no. no. There's a lot of work to do. Well. <laughs> Why, Matilda, you here? Now, isn't that just like you to come and help? Well, uh... Matilda, you're a good, good neighbor, and good neighbors' hearts are in the foundation of American homes. So are termites. Well, if you're gonna make a fool of yourself by staying in this man's house, I suppose I better stay here and protect you. Wear the aprons. Uh, well, let's get organized. Floor could stand a scrubbing. Leave it to a man. Certainly could take a woman's touch. Oh, Murph, you look kind of tired. I'll make you a cup of coffee. I'll get the coffee. Well, hello, Matilda. Hello, Matilda. All right, let them in, Susan. Everything's ready, Steve. All right, next two. No, Helen, Margaret, that's Hi, all. Hi, Margaret. Come on over here. Roll your sleeves up, please. Way up. Has anybody seen Jenny? She's in the living room, isn't she? I don't know. Jenny? Hi, Jenny. What are you doing here? I came to get Hollingsworth. Ah, get your breath, get your breath. I come to take him home. Well, I don't know. The, the sheriff ain't here, and I'm sort of in charge. Then can I take him? Absolutely not. I got my orders, Jenny. Uh, but if you was to untie him and walk him out of here, there ain't much I could do about it, is there? Uh, what's the matter? What's the matter? Nothing. I guess I, I guess I ran too fast. Take it easy. Thank you, Abner. Oh, you remember my name, did you? I read about you in the Bible. You were the captain of Saul's host, and you went over to David's side. I did? Well, what do you know? Goodbye. Don't let Mayor Snyder catch you. I won't. It's that girl, Jenny, and she's got the dog with her. What? How did she get that dog out of jail? Defy me, will she? Where's my gun? from that dog! Dog Steve! Dog Steve! Don't let him shoot! <laughs> gave it to her. What are you saying, boy? I did this to her. You can't account for all the ticks in Pan Bucket, Steve. Well, I could have accounted for my experimental ticks. She must have gotten infected when she was out on the porch. Oh, stop, Steve. She might have gotten it in the desert or from her dog. Yes, I've done a great job. I told them all to watch their P's and Q's. I told them to build a hospital, that I was too big for this burg, that I needed major league medicine. I told everybody everything about the ticks, and I forgot to vaccinate a little girl in my own home. But you can help her, Steve. You can stop it. Could I help little Clem Perkins this morning? He died in my arms. Beelzebub. Beelzebub. 
feels about... Strange. What? She keeps talking about Beelzebub. It's just delirium. <laughs> We're doing all we can for her, Hollingsworth. The dog sure loves her. Beelzebub. Kids can stand a lot of fever, Steve. I could be a bricklayer or a carpenter for all the good I'm doing. There was one carpenter could have healed her with faith. I'm afraid I haven't that kind of faith, Matilda. Peel's about. Peel's about. Steve, when she was crying so hard, there was something she was trying to tell me about. About what? Have you seen the Weekly Sentinel? No. Come with me. There's something I want to show you. You got the mother touch, Matilda. You should have had a flock of kids of your own. You should have had a flock of grandkids, you old goat, you. <laughs> well, maybe it ain't too late. For you or me? I don't know about you, but kids always ran in our family. Before Jenny got sick, she was trying to tell me the truth. She told me that Hollingsworth was not her dog. She said he belonged to Beelzebub. Oh, she was mixed up then, Susan, and feverish. No, she was telling me the truth. And then she came over to your desk and started looking for a picture she'd hidden. Plane was carrying a dog, Tamerlane, who was en route to the Denver Spotted Fever Control Station at the Field Institute. Dr. Nichols Adams, head of the Institute, stated that the collie was a great loss to his laboratory. By accident, he said, Tamerlane had been Bitten by spotted fever ticks and a medical miracle transpired. He developed an exceptionally strong immunity to the disease. Injections from his blood killed spotted fever germs and carrier guinea pigs. The dog became the bearer of the most potent therapeutic anti-serum we've ever been able to develop for this dread fever. Steve, wait, look. This is Beelzebub. Jenny saw an airplane and it was on fire. Yes, it's the same. His, his name isn't Hollingsworth at all. She picked him up in the desert. Tamerlane. We wanted a miracle, Susan. We've got one. We've got the greatest miracle in the world. Call the Field Institute in San Francisco. Come on, boy. We've got a lot of work. Operator. Operator, get me long distance. Hurry. Keep your fingers crossed, old man. Steve, I got through. The Field Institute? Yes, but Dr. Adams isn't there. They said he's on his way to Denver by car, and they've no way of reaching him. Oh, well, we've got to reach him. No, but how? Radio. Call KNQP and Lodestar. Tell him to put it on the air and keep trying. We may be able to locate him that way. Uh, uh, Susan. I'm all right. I, I get to sleep at 48 hours a day, that's all. Here, you two. Drink this while it's hot. I'll call the radio station. All right, Matilda. Good evening, sir. Uh, oh, good evening. Uh, fit it up, will you? Yes, sir. We interrupt this program of music to bring you a special flash. It is urgent for Dr. Nicholas Adams, repeat, Dr. Nicholas Adams, to telephone the Field Institute in San Francisco at once. I wish they'd find that fella. He's been busting up good programs all evening. Mind if I use your telephone? Help yourself, right inside. Let me give that a twirl, Steve. I was swinging a centrifuge before you were born. You go on back with Jenny. I'll bring the serum as soon as it's ready. Sure hope it works. What did you to tell us, Steve? You can't give her any more. But you've got to do something. What is it? 105. Steve, she's slipping away from me. I touch her and I can feel her going. What about the serum? That's just it. What about it? How do I use it? How much? See, I'm working in the dark, Susan. You've got to take that chance, Steve. If you wait much longer, it'll be too late. 
Already, Steve. No, Murph. You have no choice, boy. Remember your Hippocrates. You used to quote him to me when you came home from college. He was the master of all medicine. He said, extreme remedies are very appropriate for extreme diseases. God help me. It couldn't help much more, Steve. It's your ball from here. Steve? Steve? It's Nicholas Adams of the Field Institute on the phone. Withdraw 50 cc of the dog's blood and proceed to make a serum. As I've got the serum, I drew it out, as you say, but how much do I give her? Oh, I'd say, uh, 10 cc. Intravenously? Yes, in the arm. Unconsciously. Wish you were here, Doctor. I'll get there as quickly as possible. Where are you now? Uh, Goldstone, Colorado. I should make it by noon tomorrow. Oh, Reverend McDougal, come in. Hello, Matilda. I brought my grandchildren over to be vaccinated. Took hours to round them up. Hope I'm not too late. Oh, I'm so glad you came. Steve says Jenny is dying. He's tried everything, everything that can be done. He says it's no use, but there is something. If a thing can be done, science and skill can do it. If a thing cannot be done, only faith can do it. That's what I mean. And Jairus besought him gently, saying, My little daughter lies at the point of death. I pray thee, come and lay thy hands on her, that she may be healed, and she shall live. Now, children, Jenny is very sick. I want you to help me to pray so that we may help her. The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. He maketh me to lie down in green pastures. He leadeth me beside the still waters. There is a toes. There is a toes. Take care, Pappy. Yeah. Though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death. Shadow of death. I will fear no evil. I will fear no evil. For thou art with me. Thy rod and thy staff. They comfort me. Fever's dropping. It's worked. She's been breathing better. Hello, Hollingsworth. Daisies. They're my favorite flower. Steve. Susan, don't you realize what that means? She's going to be all right. Oh, darling, you're wonderful. You're wonderful. You get more and more wonderful for the minute. You, you think the dawn is time to say things? <laughs> darling, darling. Come in. Hi, Red. Who's dead? Telegram for Dr. Adams. Oh, you signed it. You went to school. Oh. For you, Doctor. Oh, thank you, Mark. Mind if I open it? You don't, I'll drop dead with curiosity. I've been expecting this. Uh, Steve, I want you all to hear this. For meritorious work, Field Institute is happy to present Dr. Stephen Webster a fellowship in its ranks, the sum of $5,000 that he may continue fight against dreaded disease of spotted fever. $5,000. Five thousand dollars. Five thousand? Uh-huh, that's what it says. Five thousand dollars. Well, I've got to be on my way. Thanks for the refreshments, Matilda. Nobody can bake like you. Oh, thank you, Reverend. Well, you know what they say about the way to a man's heart. Matilda, 
Have you ever thought about uh, marriage? Thought about it? I've dreamed of orange blossoms so often, I sleep with a smudge pot at the foot of my bed. <laughs> <laughs> you know the Reverend is right, Matilda. Things sure are different since you pitched in. Why, Murph. <laughs> Say, I get a bear trap down, cellar. Would you want me to grease it for you? That isn't necessary. Here, have one. I found you can catch bears with honey, too. Oh. <laughs> Dr. Adams, Susan says you're going away. Yes, Jenny, I have to leave. Are you... are you going to take Hollingsworth with you? Well, I guess Tamerlane, no, Hollingsworth, I mean, has done just about enough for humanity. I'm taking samples of his blood with me, that's all I need. I think he should settle down in a nice home with a devoted family, don't you? Yes, he should only... Only what, Jenny? Only there isn't any family. Well, what's wrong with us? But you want a family, Susan. Doc Steve thinks he's too poor to have a family. Ah, <laughs> oh, but he isn't. Of course he isn't. He's got flowers in his garden and daisies on his coffee pot, and he's rich as Solomon. You bet I am, Jenny. Look at that, Susan. Cabbage. And you've got the love of a good woman. Jenny. I mean me. But even if I do love you, I suppose you'll go away. I'm not going away, Jenny. What? I think I'm going to like being a country doctor. The Institute's given me this money for research, and I'm going to stay and work right here and raise my family. <coughs> and my family's dog. Right here in Sodom and Gomorrah? Great Grandpappy was wrong. It isn't Sodom and Gomorrah, Murph. It's heaven. That's what it is. It's just heaven. <laughs>